everybody. Sean Tubbs here. Thanks for tuning in. Coming at you with another riff. This one's a little bit outside the box as it were, but it's, it's really basic and I'm going to try and keep any rocket science out of it if at all possible. One way to do that is to keep it in the key of E, the best of all guitar keys ever. And we're going to base it around the 12th fret and it's based on a really simple uh, blues pentatonic scale that we all know. <laughs> super straight ahead, but there's a twist on it. So let's get right into it. The first note is at the 12th fret, low E string. After that note, we're going to jump to uh, the D string at the 10th fret, and we're going to slide into the 11th fret. And then from there, we're going to stay on the D string and go up to the 14th fret. There's our root. And then from there, we're going to go to the G string at the 12th fret, and we're going to slide into the 13th fret. And then from there, we'll go to the B string at the 12th fret, and the E string at the 12th fret, and we'll just uh, double stop those. Which is a shape we all know. So here's the riff really slow, uh, just the first half. I'll do it even slower. One more time. So what we're getting is that sixth kind of tonality. Instead of going, we're sliding into the sixth. So that's a really cool riff just by itself if you want to just keep that half. Now descending is where it's going to start getting a little more outside. It's based on a pentatonic. I should say roughly based on that. Um, so we're up at the 12th fret. High E string. We're going to come down to the B string at the 15th fret. Staying on the B string, we're going to go down to the 12th fret. And then we're going to go down to the G string at the 14th fret. And then we're going to come back up to the B string at the 14th fret, which is that sixth tonality again. Now here's where it gets outside. We're going to stay on the B string and we're going to go down to the 11th fret. That's going to give us a flat five. And then we're going to go down to the G string at the 11th fret. And then the D string at the 12th fret. So what we just spelled out is this. Which is basically a, a, like a dominant 7, add 9, flat 5. In the key of E. to tell you, you'll need to do the same thing. You'll kind of bridge across the B string and the G string. Bridge across there, and then when you come down, you'll bridge across again. And then the last part of the riff is really simple. It's, it's more uh, in this shape. For me, it was easier to use my third finger, my ring finger, to grab that uh, G at the 12th fret on the G string and bend up to the third. You kind of want to do that. I guess you could leave it flat. But I think it sounds better to bend up to the third, keeps it in that kind of major dominant seven blues tonality. Twelfth fret, bend up. And then you're going to stay on the G string, and you're going to move down 12, 11, 10 to the ninth fret. And then you're going to come down to the eleventh fret. And then you're going to go back up to the G string at the twelfth fret. And then back down to the ninth fret on the G string. 
to the uh, the D string at the eleventh fret, to the D string at the ninth fret, to the D string at the tenth fret, and then you're going to want to bend that up to the third as well. Now all of these riffs that kind of fit into this overall uh, parameter can be used. Like even that's a cool thing to try. I use that all the time. Uh, same with a. Sometimes I'll just stop there. But to put it all together, I'll run the whole riff um, and then I'll do it really slow so you guys can see it. So you can hear it's got the flat five tonality in there, it's got a sixth or I guess a 13 tonality in there, all kind of crammed into the same uh, blues thing. So here's the riff really slow. Here's even slower. time really slow. Now once you've got that under your fingers, one thing I want you to try and do is actually omit the first note. Don't start on the second note on the first beat, if that makes any sense, but instead of going just skip the first note. So to me that sounds more interesting. Two, three, four, one. As opposed to two, three, four. So try that. Also, another thing to keep in mind is there's, you know, a lot of these riffs like Robin Ford, all these cats that are just so good at this kind of thing. What I learned from them is, yeah, you could learn the riff and go without any accents or muting. But once you've got the riff under your fingers, start trying uh, to mute here and there. There's quite a few notes that I've muted in there that actually bring out some of the phrasing and the rhythm. As opposed to just playing it all open. And I mean, it's up to you, but I, I, I like those little ornaments or accents or mutes in there. And then of course, once you have it down, start moving it around. So you can do it anywhere on the neck. Um, that's always a good thing to practice because it just helps you know where you're at on the fretboard at all times. But it also, it, once again, it takes the, the cerebral thinking out of it and it just becomes kind of a muscle memory riff. And as always, take parts of these riffs and, and turn them into your own thing. It's like, I never want you guys to just play the exact riff. I just want you to learn the idea behind it and then apply it to things that you're already doing because that's what makes it so fun and that's how I wanna try and, and help you because these are, I, I consider these all just kind of rut uh, buster riffs when you're just kind of down in the dumps with your vocabulary. Well, maybe take something that I showed you and not only learn it, but also tweak it and apply it to things that you already know and it'll open up a whole new vocabulary. So man, I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I'll have more to come. If you'd like to buy my demolition record, it's a collection of short but sweet uh, guitar jams. Uh, the link is down below and I always appreciate you guys' support so much and we'll see you next time.